What's good, everyone? Uh, I made a video called the, uh, I don't know, whatever it was on the Bed Wars update. And I'm going to do a behind the scenes video on it just because there is so much to unpack in this timeline. Um, and even though it's only a five minute video, I just figured, you know, why not? go ahead and make a behind the scenes video so y'all can see, you know, exactly what I did and how I made this video for any of those who's wondering. So let's get into it. So first up, we have the intro. Um, I went ahead and I knew, I knew that I could not do subtitles for this video because of the 24 hour turnaround that I had to do. You know, the update came out at like 11:48 AM for me on Wednesday. Uh, and then I had, so I was in class at that point. That's cool, right? Um, so it came out then. I wrote a script and recorded and edited and finalized the whole video in roughly about 24 hours. Um, and that includes a day of school, basically. So um, I knew I couldn't do subtitles for this video, so I went ahead and just did one, which is the welcome that you see right here. And then that immediately gets hid by the Bedwars update, which I just think is a cool look. Um, we go ahead and move on with the the voiceover regarding the brand new Bedwars update. This video will cover everything about the new update and even how to rush. Uh, so what I did here is I staggered all of the entrances of the seven PNGs for the new maps uh, and added a pop up sound effects that I know and I love using it. So I just went ahead and used it and I went and I went ahead and organized each of these into how they're um, like what type of map they are. So for these four on the side, let me, there we go. So for these four on the side, um, I, there are solos and duos maps. And then these three on the right are threes and fours. Um, and then I staggered these just so that you could kind of differentiate a little bit better. Um, and I don't know, it's just a cool look there. Um, but that was something that I added in my voiceover was talking about how to rush on each of these seven maps because no one else has done a how to rush on the new maps, which I think it's kind of common sense. It's just no one really thinks about it. So I thought about it apparently, <laughs> and I added it at the beginning, uh, which is kind of a hook because some, a lot of people just won't go over that. Most people just do like a commentary video, but no, they're they're seeing insane quality, in my opinion. Um, and now they're looking at all the seven maps, and now they know if they've made it eight seconds into the video, hey, I'm going to be seeing something that I haven't seen in any of the other update videos. Pretty unique there. Um, and then I just shoved all those up and brought in my character. Of the seven brand new with maps. Pushes. I'm not going to lie pushes are literally my go-to for any smooth transition and they should be for you too because they're underrated um all i did here and for all of these as well i should go ahead and say um a lot of the pngs and the pop-ups in this video um they have some fusion work in them which is just a copy paste but it's a rectangle mask with a 0.1 corner radius so what that does is it adds this little corner here um just instead so that it's not like, you know, just a hard 90 degree angle. It's instead a 0.1 quarter radius. So it just looks that much nicer. Um, and then you can actually copy this. Um, so you can just command C that. And then anytime you're in fusion, you can just command V and it'll automatically put it into your media in, uh, which will then go to your media out. Super handy. Um, and it makes everything look so much better. I mean, this, for example, let's just... If this did not have the rounded corners, it would look horrible. I mean, it would look like that because I also cropped it, but you get the point. That just looks so much better in my opinion. And don't forget drop shadows as well. Drop shadows make things pop out from the background, um, which is drop shadows are your friend uh, for, for like having layers for video. Uh, this is the same clip throughout the whole entire video is uh, still underscore character dot MKV. That's just a, a random background clip I found in my background folder, um, like background footage or B-roll. Uh, and I just kept on reusing the same one because you can't really tell. So might as well. And it was already cropped. All I had to do is just copy and paste it. So this was the first one that I had to do. And it wasn't Hi, that this bad. Update is probably the 
Um, right here, I did a smooth. Uh, what is it? That's right. I did a smooth zoom transition, but I had the anchor point set to right here. Um, so I actually didn't know about this about DaVinci for the longest time, but an anchor point allows you to do smooth transitions when an anchor point and position kind of looks like similar in, in the transform menu. Um, whereas position, you, you know, it would just move that, but anchor point does the same, um, where, but anchor point will only work if your zoom is zoomed out. Um, so when you zoom in, it goes to wherever the position is. And then when you zoom out, it goes to wherever the anchor point is and it goes in between those. So that's how I did that smooth transition from here to here. When originally I would try and like do a smooth transition like here on the graph right here with zoom and position, but it wouldn't work. It would do like a woo woo. Um, <laughs> what was that sound effect? Woo woo. <laughs> um, instead of making a smooth movement. Um, so anchor points are really cool if you're doing a smooth movement with the whole entire thing or frame still in the video and, and it's not like moving out. This update is probably and the that's biggest what that looks like. Pretty cool. I hope I explained that well. I don't really know. Um, I said in my voiceover, let's dive into the update. So I added a green screen water effect. It's just funny. Um, over here, this is the first time that I've actually done this is the highlight effect, um, which is not, a, it's not an effect, uh, rather it's just something that you have to build on your own. But what I did here, this is a compound clip so that I could zoom in here at the beginning. This was just a, um, a standard zoom, uh, transform. Yeah, this was just a standard zoom. Um, but I made it a compound clip so I could do that with both of these aspects. So we go ahead and open up the compound clip. I have the actual, um, you know, footage here that I just recorded with OBS. And then I have a fusion comp over it. And this fusion comp is literally a background that is just yellow. It's like a highlighter color, right? So then I cropped this. I cropped this down to, you know, have not a lot of space left, but, you know, enough. And then I made it to where it only covers the part that I want it to. And I reduced the, I, I never know how to say this word. Mom, is it opa opacity? Yes. Yes. It's opacity? Okay, okay. <laughs> it's opacity. I reduced the opacity from 100 to 50 so that you could still see the black text behind here which arguably i probably should have done it less now that i'm looking back at it but this is my first time doing it 40 would do well as well also yellow is not the best color i learned after like later on in the video that's like um a magenta is just so much better and magenta is also like a pretty well-known highlighter color that just looks so much better you can read it better but of course i didn't do that Um, so opacity is at 50 and then all I did here to get the little, um, the like effect here is just, I, um, keyframed the crop, right? So, um, over here on this side, it would be zero. And then when I wanted this, it to start like reading, uh, and go to the other side, I would just hit the keyframe and then go to the other side and then just do however much. So it wouldn't go, you know, fully on like that but it would stop at the very end. Um, just a really simple effect that really shows what you're showing. You know, I always say this in my videos or in the behind the scenes videos, uh, YouTube videos are not only, it's a show and tell, right? So you're trying to show them and tell them, but a lot of people have one or the other. You can either show them, but then there's like, hey, there's no voiceover, so now you're not telling them. Or you can tell them, but now you're not showing them. You have to have both, and they have to both work hand in hand, or else your video will not be as high quality as you'd probably want it to be. Um, so that's just another key thing. I'm, I'm showing them exactly where I'm reading it from. Now we get on to an actual complex part here, which was about the rotational items. Um, 
I guess my idea here was I wanted to show some previous intros. It's like my three favorites. I, I don't I really don't know if they're my three favorites. I just choose three good ones, which were the throwable TNT, the time, the second time warp video that I just released and the most overpowered bow in high pixel bed wars. So that was the devastator bow. Um, I really just like those intros. They're all completely unique and they're very different from each other. So I just threw them in since the forum post had nothing about any of the new rotational items, except for the fact that it mentioned it. Um, I had to put something in there. And so I thought, well, might as well just show some of my previous ones and be like, Hey, if they end up do, you know, staying true to their commitment in the forum post, then I'll continue to make these types of videos. And now you're seeing them. And I also linked the, um, the card to the playlist up here in red so that I didn't really want to use an arrow because the arrow that I have is like really clickbaity and weird and doesn't fit my quality or my style. So I just added, just like I did with my previous behind the scenes video I showed you guys, I made a background and a rectangle, increased the corner radius, put it in the corner. And then I just added a push effect so that it came in from the right. Really, really simple. Cause then, then a white on red just shows you exactly again, I'm showing you and telling you this is where I want you to look um, in terms of the nitty gritty of how I edited this. Um, the, the bottom fusion composition right here is just the white background. This is a compound clip, which is all of the, the video that's taking place right here, like my intros and stuff. So I actually have the audio here, but I had to bring it out since the compound clip wouldn't do it for some reason. I could just be, really bad at that though. Uh, and then all this was here. I put my, um, the intros over, you know, for the duration I wanted it to. And I added three different composition clips and that is these tiny little buttons right here. Um, if you've ever been on a website and you've seen like the little buttons that like, like a news website or something that, that just scrolls along and it shows you different PNGs every time it moves. This was the same idea here. Um, so this one was the full one. This one was these two are not and I just kind of copied them But then this one if I move over this is the second one um, So I just changed the position of all of them and made it look like that and how I did that is I did I believe yeah, I did a background, like a white background, and then put an ellipse mask over it. I increased, um, I'm forgetting how I did this actually. That's right. I, I basically got rid of the circle here, but then it was still like there um, because I turned off solid. That's what this was. I turned off solid. <laughs> I, had to, I had to remember how I did this. So this will be checked on when you do something like this. If you check it off basically the circle will disappear but then if you in if you add a border width then it will still think the circles there so it basically just gives you a blank circle just like that and then just copied it all the way through and changed the positioning really cool um, and I also added the uh, Minecraft clicking sound effect to go through them just to signify that stuff I think those are a really cool segment and a really interesting way of doing that. I, I really don't know where that came from. It just took me like an hour and a half to figure out. And you know, there it was, uh, all these are texts. Um, and they're actually cuts. Surprisingly, I, I did cuts between this. If they do, which I typically never use cuts for, for titles and PNGs and stuff like that. But I did this time just to fit the Minecraft click sound. Uh, and this is just a now playing over the whole thing. A playlist right here. Now let's talk about the new. Um, then I faded in some new music from the bow one since you know I faded out the new donk city, uh, new donk city to do this segment. Then I faded in something else that was more more light, more poppy, stuff like that. I let this stay here for a bit just to you know give the card some time. And I kept my still character there so you could still make eye contact with me. That is something that's a bit weird. With Minecraft, you know, I can put my character up there and typically you'll look at it in the eyes of the character. It's really interesting. Uh, but I just left it up there since I was still talking and then put a um, replay mod shot 
with some zoom blur and prism blur. Not too much, just a little bit. Um, and I believe the zoom blur had a center exclusion so that you could see the center figure better um, about the practice mode. So then we went I'm in. I'm actually really excited about this. I moved this again so that you could see my pearl over here when I was throwing it because otherwise I would block it. Um, just the same thing as before. I'm actually really excited about the pearl clutching mode as I really need some work on that. As always. And then I brought me down so that I could do this section of showing you the variables and what you can change in the practice mode. This was pretty simple. I just basically copied it into my own, yeah, my own timing and language of basically what you can change. <clears throat> and for this background footage, I literally just went in and just did the practice things for like three minutes. It was great background footage and put some effects on it with a few keyframes um, so that I could like key in the the zoom blur and the prism blur, but nothing too major here. I did the same thing for the Boeing practice. This one was a bit more complex in terms of, you know, all the text and stuff. Um, one thing I don't think I've gone over before is actually how I do the gradients on these, like the color gradients on the text. So let's do that. I have over here in shading, there's multiple different elements that you can do whatever, right? I use the first three. So the, the first one is a white solid fill, of course. Oh, um, yes, yeah, so we're looking at hotbar right here. Uh, the first one's a white solid fill. Of course, if I don't have that, then there's not going to be any white there. Um, then it, the outline, which this is named red outline. The default is red. It, no one's going to use that. So I changed it to black and increased the thickness, I believe all the way, but I just like that look. And then a drop shadow, which is a, just a black shadow back here. But what we're actually going to look at, that that's how I make my text. What we're actually going to look at over here is on the white solid fill. We're going to go down. Typically this would be solid and then the color would just be, you know, white and then you can change, you know, to whatever color you want. If you go over here to gradient, then you can change on this side. If you click this little arrow, you can change what color you want that bottom side to be. And then if you click this arrow, you can change this color, right? So I can make it, you know, purple if I wanted to, if I do that, which looks meh. Um, but what I typically do is I have white on the top and something like an underglow. That's kind of how I like it, uh, of different colors. So distance, I just made green direction. I made aqua hot bar hot, made me think of red. So I just did red, you know, whatever it is, but super simple. And it looks amazing. I mean, the difference here, you can clearly see if I change, um, all of these, you see the difference? They stick out so much more when you that when they have color. So just something that I prefer. This was one of the bigger parts right here. I, I went all the way up to video track 16 to make this work. But all I did here, um, because I was running very, very low on time to edit this video at this point, was just I copied the exact same thing as I used before. Next up, we have some brand new maps. Is the I'm map. Actually and I use the same background footage, which I probably could have gotten a different one, but I was lazy and it works. They're probably not gonna remember at this point. They get the point, right? Um, and then right here, I did something very similar to the highlight effect as I did previously. Instead of highlighting text, I wanted to highlight the background of each of these PNGs. And I don't know how to do that yet. So I'm gonna figure it out one day, but for the time being, since I'm gonna show and tell you which maps are which, right? I'm talking like we have four new ones and twos maps and three new threes and fours maps. I'm going to show you which ones those are. I went ahead and did like a little highlight effect here. So this is the exact same thing. Um, nope. I got to disable all of these. <laughs> this is the, the exact same background, maybe a little bit different shade and all that. But all I did here is I just pushed it in, right? As we got four new maps. And I, I made the, the edge go under each PNG. So it looked like it was like a straight hard wire. And I'm showing you exactly which ones these are. And I did the same for over here. My opinion looks really cool. It was super quick. It showed you exactly what it is. And even though they're on the side, they're yellow, which completely stands out from everything else in that shot, which is pretty cool.
And then we get into some pretty tedious work, but work that was pretty easy. Um, I had to do seven of these for one, one for each map, right? All I did here is I went and got three or four replay mod shots, one of the full map, one of a specific section of the map that I was talking about in my voiceover. So for ambush, for example, I talked about the really cool stone structures. So I showed a really cool stone structure through like a hill and a tree to make it give it that what I was describing it as like a, you know, ancient forest style structure. Right. I thought I pulled that off pretty well. Um, so I did that for each of those maps. Right. And I would do that when I get there. I would just push in a text in the top right that is the the name and I didn't do a color. I guess I didn't really think to do a color, but I could have. And then this top fusion composition clip is the magenta bar up here. And what that does, it basically shows you how long this section is going to be. This is a Since I'm not so doing timestamps for each of the different maps on the video, I did a timestamp for the whole entire section, but then I did a visual timestamp here inside the video of how long this map is supposed to be. So if you're done listening to that map, you can just skip forward until the bar is done and you know when that is. So it actually gives me more, more watch time in the end uh, because if someone's skipping to a certain map, they can pretty quickly find it. Um, but all this was was just a keyframe starting from on the right, 1920 uh, crop, and then just going to the end of the segment, that being at zero. And then I cropped it from the bottom so that it could just show that much. Uh, this part over here was probably the most complex part, but really not that bad. These two fusion compositions are just cropped red backgrounds, made them into a line, however I see fit. And then these texts are um, how much blocks are being used for that section. And then I just faded them in. I didn't even do a push because that wouldn't look good. So I just faded them in and did it for any other shot that I needed to do. And that was each of the seven maps. So I did that seven times. This part is pretty self-explanatory. I just added a replay mod shot, changed my pack with the same replay mod shot. Like I just timed them up and then added a, a little, um, what was it? It was a brightness flash, whatever, transition. Looks pretty cool. And then these are just reused clips in the background, which I forgot to put effects on, but it still works in the end with my still character again using the same clip, but works. Now over here, we're just, it's, it's, this is really a home stretch from here. We have the quests, which I just used you new a, um, you know, a replay mod, which I forgot to put effects on again. This is how rushed this video was, even though it doesn't look rushed. It was very, very rushed. Um, added, I just quickly went into Hypixel and just found which quests I was talking about in order and showed them, um, as well as these, which I probably shouldn't have included this part. Added but 250 more experience to the- It's fine. Um, added my still character back since I was talking with a, um, a background and then added the, these just pushed them in really simple. Um, quality of life updates. I kept the same replay mod shots going. I just got a bunch in the lobby and just put those in loops so I could just have them as a backing track basically. And then quality of life updates. I got a, a snippet from the forum, um, put a rectangle mask. Yes. I, yeah. Rectangle mask on it and then put some quarter radius. And then these fusion clips are all of the highlighting stuff again. The ones are the changes. Some are yellow. Quick buy menu. The ability to change your hot bar layout from the line. And some are magenta so that you can tell the difference between what I'm talking about. And they're definitely not up there for long, but I think the, the message was given indirectly that you should pause if you really want to read what this is. But I'm just showing you what I'm talking about during that portion. Bug update, I literally just threw it up there because I didn't have anything else. And then that was it. I just kind of ended it there. The fade, the fade out did not look right here. So I just, I just kept it there. And that was the whole entire video. Um, this video took like eight hours to edit in total. Seven to eight hours, give or take. And like four of that was today when I was 
quote unquote supposed to be at school, but I'm out because, you know, senior exemption. So um, really good video overall, even though five minutes and I'm pretty proud of it. So that's the whole behind the scenes of how I did that. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.